Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my repeat guest is Nina Ferreira. She is a divorce coach, and our last show that we did some years ago was actually on her journey to divorcing. Uh, she knows what it's like. She knows about the cultural marriages, and she knows about staying out of duty and living through the emotional thing of divorce, should I, shouldn't I, etc. Um, so she knows what she's talking about. But what we're going to be talking about today is knowing when to divorce. Divorce or not to divorce during COVID. We know that relationships are being tested during COVID, but we don't know how or when to call it quits. Do we stay? Is it just a hiccup? Is it something that we've got to navigate through? Or really, is this a time of true colors that have been shown and you didn't know this person at all? until you are locked up with them and really it's time to call it quits so as a divorce coach is going to share us some tips and some wisdom not every marriage needs to be thrown in a bin uh, and sometimes okay. it's just a question of of you know really looking or getting to know this person you know that can they handle the stress can they handle the lockdown can they handle all the changes that are going on and sometimes it's helping them through it to help the, the relationship and sometimes it's just like oh no i don't know who you are but i'm not the man i married or the woman i married and it's most certainly time to call it quits as a divorce coach what kind of feedback have you been getting from your clientele during this wonderful lockdown time of unsure um, COVID times? So I think Sarah is, thank you so much for having me on the show again. It's exciting to yes, good have you back. I think it was 2013 I looked back that we, wow. we wow. did our first show. It's been a few years, how yes. time flies. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm seeing with my clients or people that are coming to me or even looking sharing my own story when I was going through my divorce you know, now we get a chance to sit with ourselves. Mm. That you get to sit with ourselves, all those distractions of going to work. We're, we're programmed. It's a program. Yes, uh, yes. We're programmed. Okay, go to work. Get up and go to work. Okay, we kiss our cup, make the lunches, everything for our kids. We, you know, we go about our day, go to work. After work, we have a, we have a set schedule for ourselves. So that schedule has been shifted with this COVID. Okay, so people go on and they're, they're having to sit with this. Cause I remember when I, you know, left my marriage, I got busy, busy, busy. Okay. And then, you know, come, you know, even after I separated, I was still busy taking care of the kids, the house. So then what happened was I, the kids were done school. I sold my house and downsized mm -hmm. and I had to sit with myself. Mm -hmm. So, and having done so much work prior to leaving, I still hadn't healed completely healed from my divorce. So looking back now, comparing that to COVID, I had to sit with myself. So I remember when all this stuff came up to the surface Yes. and I'm like, wow, I feel a sense of loneliness. Mm. Like, What's going on? And I'm, you know, and I'm trying to connect the dots and further coach myself, but still I was frozen. And that's when I hit myself with deep depression for two years. And that's where I did most of the deep work where I realized that I really hadn't healed. I had done some healing work, but I was busy. So going back to the COVID, people are, they're going to be, the distractions are gone now. The mm -hmm. work, the gym, the kids are now home. You can't, you have to be mindful going to the grocery shop. You can't say, well, I have nothing to do. Let's go to the mall. Yeah. You can't do any of that stuff anymore. You got to be so mindful. So there's a different structure and people, our feelings are going to start coming up. Mm -hmm. what's going on? Why am I feeling this? Why are people going to be irritated by the little things? Yes. I mean, I can relate. My kids have been home. The older ones back to work. The young one just back to work. Just little things. Even after doing so much work on myself <laughs> and I'm so able to bring myself back and say, Oh, it's okay. You know? So people that haven't done the work or, you know, they're, they're getting irritated with their spouses. Okay. So being neutral around the divorce, whether to leave, I'm a whether to leave or whether to stay coach. So I help women decide whether they should stay and work it or leave. So going back to COVID, people are, 
you know, the people that are coming to me or just, um, they're looking at what's coming up for them. Why am I irritated? Why am I feeling confused? Because now they're having to sit with their emotions. They're having to sit with their partners all the time. And, you know, how much, and before they were in a journey of going to work, they, so this time they did spend with their partners was limited. Mm -hmm. Now they're with them all the time or more of the time, more frequently. So going back to what are clients saying, they're, they're like, okay, what do I do now? So that's when people, they come to a discovery call for me, or they'll listen to this radio show or other stuff, work I've done, or start reading. Mm -hmm. And that's when they really start to connect the dots or kind of have that aha moment. Mm -hmm. And then women have three reasons, a fear of leaving, you know, we all do the, the fear of leaving, the concern for the children, and then the finances. Mm -hmm. well, so those are three right now, right now, the finances are being challenged, but Sarah, I'm going to be neutral on that only because I stayed in marriage for 25 years and didn't know how to leave. Yes. I didn't even have the aha moments. So now I'm so compassionate towards everybody. They're having to stay and be kind of a lockdown and don't have the choices to go to work and have their partner to home, the kids are home. Everything's being shifted for them. So that, you know, brings a lot of compassion to me because I've been there myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in terms of the finances, you know, I struggled a lot. One, I didn't have aha moments and, you know, clients come to me with, well, I have these illnesses and my depression and having gone through them myself, struggling with those and sure, you know, the, and the, when I started working, the root was, emotions yes emotions I, I you know I can't say this enough they are the root of every illness out there and having worked for the medical system people don't see how crucial and I got to the root the root was not feeling the built-up suppressed emotions yeah and they start at childhood it's a programming we've gone it's not that a, a parents didn't know they just knew and they just passed on what they knew right exactly right so going back to the finances there's never going to be a you know, I know as women, we have that fears. Okay. And I had the fears too, but as I started working through those fears, one fear, tackle one fear, I wait. And the next fear came up. It was that much to, it was that easier to tackle. Yes. Yeah. And with my support and guys, and you know, I have to be honest, divorce cannot be done again. It cannot be done on your own. No. A lawyer is great. They know the legal stuff. Okay. And I had a lawyer too. But I think it was me having that support really guiding me. Okay, so now this, this emotion is coming up. And why is it coming up? Learning to connect the dots. And you know what? The aha moments you get, you know, when you're going through a divorce and connecting to your emotions. And I think that makes a divorce so much peaceful for everyone involved. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a nasty mudslinging one. You know, um, when I asked my husband for a divorce, he still stayed in the house in a different room for two years before he moved on. You know, wow. had his own life. And I actually kind of went back to school and did a whole load of courses. And it, he kind of had to realize it was definitely over. And, you know, when it was oh, obvious, you know, he already had somebody else in his life. And, you know, it's really now time to move out, have our separate lives. It was easier. I couldn't do it in the beginning. Because, it, you know, it was a territorial thing. It was a control thing. It wasn't anything to do with love. And over that two years, as he moved on, which I willed for him, um, it allowed me to, to go into my own self-discovery and it allowed him to go and do this thing. And then it was a foregone conclusion. And, you know, I was determined not to go the lawyer way. I actually attended a lawyer's conference where he said, you don't want to hire me. I'm the last resort. Wow, Only if you're really it. difficult. And he told us all of the steps to do in order to protect ourselves. And the only time a lawyer came into it when it was a final divorce where we had to talk to mediators and a lawyer to, to do the final divorce. By that time, we'd been separated seven years. So it was just a foregone conclusion. But it wasn't easy. And it isn't easy readjusting after marriage. You know, um, it was um, loneliness. I certainly do know that. I didn't even date anyone for five and a half years. Um, and it is a hard thing to navigate. But I think what we're looking at right now is, as you say, you haven't got work, you haven't got your friends to go to to talk about it. You, you know, you can't go somewhere to kind of, uh, oh, what are these feelings? Are these feelings just because I feel trapped inside and I want to get out? Or do I really hate him right now? And is it a temporary thing? Is he not handling it either? And both of them are mishandling it and taking it out on each other. 
And that's why I love the work that I do is I can actually support you whether to leave or whether to stay and kind of give you clarity. Why is Mm -hmm. this coming up? Because now looking at my own journey, Sarah, oh my God, I was trapped within myself. Yes, yes. I I didn't like who I was in my marriage and it certainly wasn't me. (laughs) So I really believe that relationships expand yourself. Yes. Relationships help us grow and help us see those wounds in her. They're Mm -hmm. mirroring stuff to us. Mm-hmm. And many of us don't know that because right. of our programming, conditioning, and belief systems. Mm-hmm. So having done that deep work myself, I can so easily, when people come on a discovery call with me, they share their divorce story, how they met all, and their family story and all that. I'm able to see so much they're not. And that's why the clients, people come to me for a discovery right. call is to, okay, because I actually want to help them see. And because I also want to tell you, share that the grass is not greener on this side. Right, exactly. Okay. So I want them to see that if there's a possibility of staying, they can work on with, you know, I have programs they can work in and, and stay. But if they decide they want to leave, I also do not only the, you know, work you through if you want to stay or leave, I also do the separation divorce process. So mm-hmm. like the work I do is deep. Yes. And, and, you know, the thing is, like, divorce don't take lightly. I mean, we, we've seen this, you know, so many celebrities, divorce. I'm getting divorced. I can't stand the person. And, and, you know, kind of begs the question, did you know who you were when you first went into this marriage? Because really what we're looking at in a good marriage is two whole people who have already done their own individual work coming together in a synergy, not one them becoming the other. You know, it's the two strengths coming together in a synergy that is cohesive and and compatible with one another. But if you are broken beforehand or disconnected from yourself beforehand, that's what you're bringing to the relationship. And if you're bringing it to asking someone to fix you, well, you've attracted like. They're probably dysfunctional as well. And now you've got two dysfunctional people trying to fix and instead finding fault with each other and just making the distance further and further and and further away. On that note, I want to share that I truly feel with all my obstacles, we meet people for a reason. Yes. A, season, a lifetime. Yes. I love yeah. that quote. Yeah. It resonates so well when you start doing the work because I help people go within. Yeah. You know, I always say, and I want people to come to the same conclusion after they decide to leave or stay, is come to the conclusion that my partner was a gift to me. Because mm-hmm. I truly, even to stay, I feel my, you know, we still have our differences here and there, but you know, that's normal. But I truly believe the relationship we've established is because I did that deep inner work. Yes. Okay. And he's truly a gift to my life. He's a spiritual, he became my spiritual um, mentor, you could say, or partner to show me all those parts. We don't meet people by accident. I right. Exactly. Going through yeah. my own journey. He helped me heal all those parts. Had I not met him, I wouldn't be able to heal all the stuff I did because my family has a history of depression and illness Mm. as well. Right. And I broke that cycle. So we Mm. all have that cycle. You know, we can all break those programs and conditions and the work I do is deep. I will get into your story, extract stuff, coach you through it. You will be able to come out and you know, that will make you stay and have aha moments. No, we can work it out. Yeah. Especially when you stayed with someone, you've been with someone, had kids with them for 20, 25 years. Right. They're not a bad person unless they're beating you up or something right. else is going on deeper. Yes. That, because our subconscious mind takes things and we suppress it even deeper. So when yep. you bring awareness to it, you know, I saw things that were hidden. I didn't know. I still get aha moments. Yes. Like the journey is so, it just never ends. So I'm able to see that. So if they can stay for reasons that they weren't seeing and I coached them through that and they have those aha moments, they can stay and save their marriage. I don't want people to leave. Right. Because I feel but, that but, really, yeah. But they've got to they've got to be willing to work on themselves. You know, if if there's a problem in the marriage, it's not just one finger, one finger. You know, I had to realize, you know, my my husband loved quote kick me, all right, uh, when I'm down, not physically, emotionally, browbeater. But I handed him the boots. Right? I handed him the boots. He put them on and kicked me. That onus is on him. My onus is I handed him the boots because I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't think enough of myself. 100%. And so, Self-love is right, so, so important. Treated, yeah. So he treated me in the way that I treated myself. So I think when you are looking at a relationship, we're in, each person needs to work on themselves before they can come together and work on each other, you know, work together as a relationship. This isn't about fixing the relationship. It's about fixing yourself so the relationship has a chance to find its strength again. 
but 100%. it's not the finger pointing, right? It's not that. No, it's, it's the not. finger pointing back at us. <laughs> That's right. Look within. So I always start with a client. When a client comes to me is I say, well, let's write your divorce story. They decide, first I do the 20 minute clarity call. Then I start with a divorce story. And that divorce story, they write it and they write it. And I support them through that. I say, well, this is why you met your ex. And mm-hmm. you know, what? they didn't know that. And, right. and, and that gives it deeper. But you're right. They have to be willing to do the work. Yes. And there's a lot of fears around it. What's going to come up? Yes. But those fears are a good thing. It's a yes. good thing for you to look deeper because I, I don't like people staying where they shouldn't be staying. And, 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 uh, and each person is going to take their own journey at their own time. How many times do we see people who actually do get a divorce? And then, you know, the, the other person who hasn't been willing to do the work eventually does it. And they come together again somewhere down the road and fall in love again because the love was never the problem. The problem was themselves who they brought to the love, right? 100%. Right. And so it's not going to be done always at the same time. And sometimes you've got to look at it. Maybe this is just a pause in our relationship. I'm going to do my work. You do your work. And if we can find that synergy back to each other, we will. 100%. And I can share a personal story on that. When I separate in 2012 and we divorced in 2015, like I said, the COVID will bring up that you don't no longer, I call it, you no longer have those distractions. Okay. Right. So my distraction died down about end of 2015, 16, when I sold the house and, and the kids were out of school. And I remember I wanted to get work things out with him because there was so much sense of loneliness and depression yeah. hit. And, and honestly, and we tried, but then as I got out of my depression, I started healing because I was doing more work because the little journey is, it never ends. Mm-hmm. So I did more work and I realized, no, we're so different. Yes. And when I saw the difference, I also saw... I saw him as a human being who did his best. He provided yeah. for my kids. And you know what? The only reason he provided went above and beyond because I went above and beyond for myself and did the healing. I didn't point fingers at him, even, even though he may think I did. Mm-hmm. But I was, I because I was able to heal myself, I it healed him in a way that, hey, she's not a bad woman, but we couldn't be together because yeah. I, had, I had grown so much as a person. Right. Yeah, two totally different people now. And my ex and I walked our daughter down the aisle together uh, oh. in, in uh, November, uh, October 18. And, uh, you know, we will attend functions together and things like this. And we're friendly. And I had lunch with him and his girlfriend the other day and, and her grandchild, which he's kind of adopted because we've got no grandkids yet. And, you know, we're, we're agreeable and amenable to each other. There is absolutely no way I could go out with someone like him today. But at the time, you know, I was attracted to him for different reasons. And the greatest gift I had was self-discovery of myself, because that's where I learned to place value on myself, and also my three wonderful children. And so, you know, you look at it, and he's, I have to look at where he's coming from with so much programming and and dysfunction. Mm. That journey had to be his. I couldn't help him. And I had to help myself. And uh, the fact that there there was never a a way back, that's okay. But there is no animosity. There is no hate. There is no mudsling because, I mean, the the only people that, well, other than the people throwing the mud, you're you're both going to get hurt. The children. I cannot stand to see the children being pulled in a a divorce that it's just going to destroy those kids on so many levels. And I think that's deplorable. And we really need to look at ourselves. If you're looking at there has been beatings of the children, sexual abuse of the children, Mm -hmm. that is a totally different case. And that breaks my heart as well. Yes. So the three reasons I shared with you, a woman had the actual fear of leaving and the concern for the children and the finances. Yes. And you know, honestly, the way, because I do so much deep emotional work and things come to the surface, we can do a divorce. The kids aren't affected. Not only do I help you save time, money, and the emotional turmoil, like the way I managed my divorce, because I had so much work, inner work on myself and feeling my emotions and all that, that when it came to divorce, my kids, sure, they felt a little bit, but yeah. not to the point where, you know, I see so much, there's such a battle where, you know, there's custody battles going on. Yeah. You know, kids aren't allowed to see their parents, you know, right. they love us both. Yes. They and they feel doing. guilty. They take on the blame and it's got nothing to do with them. And I just have, I have no patience for, for people like that. It is, you know, the harm that you're doing your children and ultimately yourself 
you know, is step out of your ego, which is where we're at. And, you know, uh, I think one of the, the things that we look at today and having done a number of shows on relationships is we, we've forgotten or we never learned how to have a conversation because we're always speaking to what we think somebody wants to hear and we're always listening in order to respond. And what we're not doing is feeling safe enough or vulnerable enough to be able to speak from our hearts and really see how we're feeling because we're so scared of judgment. And I think this is where a lot of the breakdown happens in relationships because we don't feel we can be vulnerable and we can be honest. And that's 200%. But also there's so many, again, going back to, we didn't know who we were. Right, exactly. I got married too young. We didn't know who we were. It was all love, love. Like love is part of it, but we need to be mindful around. And communication is huge. We never learn how to communicate. Right. Men and women, it wasn't taught to us. It's okay. We can all, we're always on a learning curve. And, you know, that's huge. We don't know how to communicate. No. And, then we, and then we have all these distractions come to us mm-hmm. and we end up having children. And then we have our jobs. We end up going back to school. You know, we, we keep And the big word, duty, 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 right? Our duty to our children, our duty to our husband, our duty to the marriage. And duty overtakes love and companionship well, considered like a death penalty yes yes and in you certain know, cultures right in other cu- yeah cultures yes. plays a huge role but yeah. even in general as women we got to keep it together yeah okay but you know how much harm you do by staying mm. for the children yes i know i see it in other people's marriages people that clients that come to me i see it with one of my boys and it's taken so much work on myself to actually have a relationship with him so he yeah. doesn't suffer Mm-hmm. So I, I'm quite familiar with how the children get affected. And that's why, you know, I love the three reasons, you know, that I created that fear of leaving, concern for the children and the finance and how we can work through them. Mm. So you can have an amicable divorce without. I, and the- also don't stay for the kids. It was my kids that came to me and said, mom, this is ridiculous. It's time for a divorce. Wow. And, and I said, well, you know, I'm waiting till the youngest finished school. And she turned around and said, oh, forget that. This isn't working. We want you two to depart. There is no way you can be together. And, and it was through them. And know? I can so relate to that, Sarah, that you shared. One of my boys, the older one, said, you know what? He goes, Mom, you're born and raised here. You know, you can speak perfect English. You have an education. Why did you stay? I said, dear, I didn't know. Right. So all these feelings were coming out, but I had no one to explore them with. And the coaches I had, they knew what they knew. That was that was where I was in my journey. Yes. So as I wanted more, the universe listened to that. Yeah. And he goes, you know, I have other mothers. Yes, they're not as educated as you and they're not born or raised here. Why didn't you leave? You know? And I say it was belief systems. It's program. It was conditioning. Yeah. You know, that huge expectation that I had to make it work. Failure. You failed in your marriage. So automatically so a stigma, right? <laughs> yeah. Why are we so hard? And on that note, yeah. we're so hard as women. Are men that hard? I see it. We as women, we have so much to learn. And well, we look at it as a failure. They look at it as a justification. Okay. That's, that's a good point. I like that. They can justify the reason for leaving. Because that's how, that's how their mind thinks. Yeah. Like men, they know what they know. And as a woman, we know what we know. Yeah. So again, back to communication. Yeah. We haven't learned that art of communication with a masculine and feminine. And I'm right. learning that myself today. Yes. yes. And you know how much that has benefited me in the work I do with the ladies, as well as my two boys. Mm-hmm. My boys are gift too. You know, as much as mm. we, you know, want a girl, I see my boys are gift and I have nieces and stuff, which is great. But I see with my boys, it's such a gift because they mirror so much. I'm like, I'm learning, I'm dating too. So I'm learning so much from just having two boys. They go, mom, relax. This is what I hear from them. I think also (laughs) for a lot of people, you know, I remember when when I I separated from my husband and somebody said, oh no, don't do that. It's best to stay with the devil, you know. And Mm -hmm. and I thought, no, I, I can't because our entire marriage was about control. And it wasn't about love, you know, it wasn't even about like. And so it was, it had to happen before it became totally nasty. And, 
you know, it's, I think the biggest thing is people are afraid to be alone, as you said, mm-hmm. of, you know, loneliness, but getting to that place in your life where you are very happy to be alone with self without feeling lonely. And the only way you get that is you know, going in, taking the journey and finding some self-love. We don't want somebody in our lives to complete us or because we're lonely. We want somebody that compliments us that sees us, that embraces and celebrates us. Well, until you do that for yourself, you're not going to attract it in someone else. And 100%, Sarah, and I can so, you know, say that from my experience, having done such deep emotional work, because my journey started in 2012. And I would say the gist of it, 2018, I felt, started about 2016, like I said, the distractions went, just like COVID right now. People are having to sit, like, what's going on? The feeling, I don't feel so good, because we're so used to being busy, busy, busy. Yes. And that's so down, right? So going back to my own journey, um, you know, from 2012, 2018, business stopped every, all the emotions came up to surface, like a roller coaster ride, even though they were there, but I wasn't feeling them because I was so distracting myself with the kids, the house, the separation process, everything. And and as well, doing a little bit of dating, but I was so amazed that I had, I had all these amazing coaches who said, you know what you need to, until you complete one relationship don't go into a next one. Okay. Yeah. So that's been amazing for me learning about self love and, mm. and you're right. No relationship will complete you. you complete yourself. And you know, I'm at the point now with or without a relationship, my life, I gotta be honest as a woman, I'm so grateful that I can take this and, sh- and support other women through this. So until, you know, they can leave a relationship, this one with everything intact, you know, overcoming their fears or challenges and keeping the children intact and the finances and then work, heal themselves through it. Cause my work is just, I feel it's very powerful having gone through all the work I've done to show them that. So the, all that stuff is in, is in place before they date. And, they sh- and it they should date? be, I mean, how many people do we see get a divorce and immediately start dating? They want to replace, replace. No, you know, you're looking for someone else to fill the gap that your husband didn't give you, but it's the gap you need to fill for yourself. And, you know, rushing out and dating someone else is not going to fix you. You have to fix you. That person's going to mirror stuff that you haven't healed. Exactly. I saw that all the time and I'm still seeing it. Even though I've done the healing, we're going to see it's a lifelong journey. It was... It was five and a half years um, after my husband and I separated that um, I started dating and it was actually my business partner and we fell into a relationship. And our relationship actually really only lasted two years, although we lived under the same roof for 11 years as partners and going through our various journeys. Um, he became, you know, my best friend. Um, but the relationship part of it didn't, but, but the relationship part of it was really important for me, the way it ignited me and what it showed about me. And one of the things that he was meant to be for me in my life was, you know, give me permission to be Sarah. Let me know that I am capable of doing things, that all I have to do is step up and try and I can do it because I'd always been told I can't. I can't, I can't. And he was pushing me, telling me, you can, you can. So he came into my life to ignite me and set me on a path of self-discovery. And that was all he was meant to be for. So it's not about going into another relationship and replacing a husband and having another serious relationship. The people that come into your life, very often either a reflection of you or there to teach you about yourself. And 100%, and, every relation comes to our lives to help us grow. Right. And evolve. And this is going to be a life John journey. So whether we're dating right now or not, yeah. we are learning from our friends. I'm learning from you right now so much stuff. And and that's, be willing to talk about it. You know, it's not about getting together and having a husband bash. You know, I mean, we, we, you, I know, like we're, you know, it's, we are hurt. We did want this to be forever. There are things that they've done and we've done that hurt the relationship. We have to own up to that. But it's about talking to each other about what we see in each other. You know, do you, do you know that you self-sabotage yourself and you're not aware of it? Or do you know how beautiful you are inside and out and, and you've yet you've decided to see yourself as ugly? Sometimes having those other people reflect back to you in trust, not in bitchiness, in trust, helps us start to see ourselves in a different way. And that's so true because when women work with me, they share what's going on, right? Yeah. And that's where I help them work. So when, if they do decide to leave, then they can 
the divorce process can be so much easier. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because your emotions are intact. You've connected the dots. Why the relationship failed could be lack of communication or you didn't have self love for yourself. You're grown as a person. You know, a lot of, you know, talking on if you've grown as a person during your marriage and you no longer connect with each other, it's not a bad thing to depart because now you, you've grown. You need to meet people at your level. So a lot yeah. of people, and that's what happened in my marriage, honestly, is we didn't grow together. He's a right. wonderful man. He still supports us. It's, it's, we just didn't grow together. And it's okay. Right. And I think we're better as, as friends than we are as partners. Right. And, and that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, the love relationship as partners in this way outgrow. And then, you know, you look at the other side of the relationship as friends. And it's better for the relationship as a family. You know, for the first five and a half years, um, I would still go to parties with my, with my husband and, uh, you know, go to events and people go, but aren't you guys separated? Yes, but we still do things together. We're friends, right? We just know that we can't live together. We can't be together until I got somebody else in my life and then he didn't want to be friends anymore for a while. <laughs> that was a different story. Um, but I think it's, you know, we, oh, we got, I, you know, for me, I was staying together for the kids. And the kid's saying, are you crazy? You're miserable. He's miserable. That makes us miserable. And you know, right? we can do it when the kids are younger, Sarah. Yeah. But when the kids are older, like, you know, they're in high school or we're still in that dist- in the busyness, right? So go back yeah. to distraction COVID, you know, kids at school. And, you know, when the kids are at school, like, it's like a busyness, right? You're being distracted constantly. You got to take the activities. You got to do this with them. You got to take care of the finances, all that. So what's going to happen when that, that's all gone? Yeah. Are you still going to stay? Then you'll get busy with your hobbies. But is that yeah. enough? Yeah. And I think during this COVID time is that, you know, we're, we're not being able to go out and do what we normally can do. But, you know, we've got this thing called Zoom. And, you know, it's a set up a Zoom date with a girlfriend. You know, talk to people. Um, have an agreement. If, if you are in the same house, look, you know, I'm just seeing too much of you right now. Can we agree? to be at different places in the house right now and just have some time out. We're scared to communicate, Sarah. Yeah, I know. Because we've never done it before. Right. right? Fear attached to that. Yeah. uh, You know, one of the things I had fear was boundaries. Yes. You know, boundaries are so important, you know. Boundaries, I learned very, you know, a few months ago, boundaries are the ultimate love. They're the ultimate love with your children, your coworkers, business partners, everybody. Boundaries are so important. And maybe they weren't communicated properly. And now you've got time to sit with them. It's time to communicate boundaries. Boundaries have been like a a bad word. Yeah. It's not not borders. We're not putting up walls. We're just putting in the boundaries of overstepping each other's emotions or feelings that could cause a friction. And, and letting everybody know it's guidelines. It's guidelines. I feel boundaries are a form of communication. Yeah. If they're done properly mm-hmm. and set properly, being very mindful around it. Because some people are very, you know, as I've grown in my journey, um, some people are very, um, they don't like boundaries. So no. it's all in the communication mm-hmm. and bring it, say, you know, I don't like you doing that, or I feel this, or, or bring it back to self. Boundaries, I think communication is so easy to ex- express or communicate with someone is when we bring it back to ourselves yeah. and not point the finger and blame. Because then right. the situation or the communication we're having, trying to have with this person becomes very complicated. And you know, I know that right now tensions are high with people. Uh, you know, not just the fact because they're isolated or maybe their jobs have been affected. You've got the kids at home. Everybody's appreciating their teachers so much more. Um, it, it's uncertain times and we're not out of the woods yet. We've still got a long way to go. So as we're asking people to step up and change things up in their own lives in society, because we can't go back to the old norm in every way, the old norm has been dysfunctional. This is an invitation to change things up in, into a more uh, kinder, a loving and caring way in everything we do to ourselves and to everyone else. I think this is a great time to have that conversation um, with your spouse and say, okay, we've never been given this time before. How do you see our future? Are you in the same vision? Because you'll be very, very surprised that you think it's the old picket fence and the rocking chair down the road for the two of you or traveling together and they've got a totally different idea. This is the time to both share your visions, 
and it's the cohesiveness. Yes. Community is so important and we've been scared because we maybe distractions have happened. We don't want to offend. We don't want to offend. So that's why communication is so important. Yeah. And speak on your truth. Yes. Yes. I think we're just afraid of truth altogether because we have been programmed. Don't hurt anybody. And, you know, there is a way of communicating without hurting. I actually always found in my relationship to talk mm-hmm. would cause conflict. So what I used to do is write write letters and then ask in with the letter, read it a couple of times before we talk about it. And then that way they can have their reaction. They can read it again and then get what I'm trying to say. And now when we come to it, that's been digested. And now we can actually have the conversation. And, and exactly. I, th- I think writing is so important. So yes. part of the work is I get people to journalize a divorce yeah. story. Journalize, write but writing to the person that you want to speak to about the situation. Yeah, it's so important. So yeah. they're aware because sometimes men and women, I learned this. Mars, Mars and Venus, remember? It is so true. <laughs> yes. we, yeah. we communicate so differently. Yeah. And, you know, that's so amazing. I was, you know, I get aha moments how the universe created us. That's another yeah. topic. But how women, we overanalyze. Men have a lot to teach us, believe me. Mm-hmm. And they've been sabotaged. I don't, one of the work that I do is I don't want you to bash. And that's why, so I go yeah. so deep into the programming conditioning. So you have aha moments. You're yeah. able to connect those dots. So you see, hey, it wasn't his fault. He only bought to the marriage what he knew. Yeah. From his, exactly. his family origin. So we go deep into his family origin as well. So the work I do is very, very deep. And, you know, I had my coach do some deep work on me. I'm like, Wow. I had no idea this was going on as well. Yes. So the journey never ends. Like the deep, no. deep the ancestral stuff is so deep, Sarah. Yes. Like I don't want to go scare people on the show right now, but the ancestral stuff is so deep. And the program we take on from that into our relationships, not only our marriages, other relationships. So not only will the work I do, you heal from, your marriage and be able to move on and communicate better with your children and the finances, you will take that work and communicate differently with everyone in your life. Yeah. So if you decide that's a, you know, the, if you want to go deeper, because you, you can, the, the journey never ends. No, even, but, but that doesn't mean it has to be a difficult journey. It, you know, it becomes self-discovery and exploration of what is else is around the corner. It's not like, oh God, have I got more to do? No. When we say the journey never ends, is that there is always something to discover about ourselves and opportunities. And that can be exciting. When you step into your self-clarity, your meaningful purpose, you really now are at peace with yourself and who you are and what you're here to do. And that journey becomes something exciting, not something that's a chore. But you know, you've heard the terminology of, well, she's not the woman I married. No, you're not the man she married. You've both evolved through circumstances in life. And if you haven't grown together, you either have to acknowledge that and find a way back by each working on yourselves to come back together, or you have to realize, no, we've just grown too far apart to be able to come back together and see things on the same platform. But the most important thing is keep it amenable. Because the moment you step into the muscling and the nastiness, the only people that win are the lawyers. And, 100%. And, and that's the work I do, Sarah, is help them overcome their fears of leaving, the yes. concern for the children, and the finest. They, they will need a lawyer, I'm not saying, but I have a lot of resources available so they can save the time, the money, yes. the emotional turmoil. And that makes divorce so much easier. And yeah. you're right. The lawyers are great because they know the lawyer, but I'll be able to guide them. I'll advocate. Like I've had one client, which I took, she goes, I don't know how to communicate with my lawyer. I said, she spoke really good English. Not a problem. I said, I'll go with you. So I would ask the right questions, having gone through it myself. Yes. You know? um, so I asked the right questions. So we're able to, so it's oh, because when someone's going through a divorce, they're already very overwhelmed. Yes. They're very emotional. Yes. So there are lots of emotions going right through. Questions. I'm not a lawyer by any chance, but I able to communicate advocate on my client so they're able to so you know as lawyers they're only going to share what the clients want right right uh, and, and that bills, can be intimidating can be exactly. very intimidating and also the bills start they're yes. wondering, asking the right questions you know um so that's where i come in i'll you know go with your lawyer if you, want, you need some hand holding talk to a lawyer on the phone send emails so, so I'll, I'll do that work for them yeah so they save the time the money the emotional turmoil and they're able to navigate better and have a good relationship with the children 
yeah. and the family. Like yeah. I still think it with, with the people in my life that I knew before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, that, that's point. the important thing. It doesn't have to be nasty. And, and, you know, you don't always have to go the lawyer way, you know, full thing. I mean, there are so many um, things out there where you can find out what the rights are, what everything are. And when you've both agreed, this is quits, this is it. You know, there is no mending this. Then both of you can be adults and come to the table of how can we divide this in a way that's going to be sustainable for the family and then you can go to the lawyer with uh, the agreement uh, for the for the lawyer to and that's right there and that's part of the work i do because mm. i will actually you know part of my work is in my you know is in my sessions i do in my coaching packages is i will look at the agreements yeah okay. and because this person's done so much emotional work I support them. I don't say, no, I don't think this is right. I will say, okay, well, what, how do you feel about this? What do you think about this? Is this going to help your child? Your child's 10 years old now. Are you getting enough for their university? Yeah. Parenting. I'll look at the parenting agreement. You know, I look and then let them decide. So they, they start thinking, okay, well, is this, and you know, they start doing the math and then they take it back to the lawyer. So I do that as well. So that gain saves time yeah. and also the emotional turmoil at, with the lawyers. I, you know, knowing what to ask or even knowing how to address it with, you know, with your spouse when you've come to that agreement. You know, we can't just think of today or tomorrow. We have to think long term, you know, with the children. Um, I admittedly, I didn't come out well on the marriage like that. Um, basically, I just came out with part of the house and, uh, and that was it. Um, but, you know, for me, it's, it's just I knew that there was there wasn't going to be anything else. And so for me, my freedom was more important to me at that right. time. And I'll share a story on that note. I had a client once who, you know, she came with me and she showed me her contract and I said, Oh, did you take, and she was getting a settlement and I, I think it was three fifty or something. And I said, did you take into consideration that the children go to university and everything? She goes, no. So I helped her revamp the agreement. And then she discussed that with a lawyer and she got that settlement she wanted. Right. Because it wasn't put in, but that also, I just told her that, but because she had done so much emotional work and she knew how to approach it right. with her partner, it made a huge difference. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid it I didn't have anybody like you around at the time. It was something I had to navigate myself. And uh, men do, are, do have the concern for yes. the children and yes. the finances. They, they want you to be looked at. Right. Yes. And we're so unaware of, you know, the child support because we're so overwhelmed when it comes mm. to yeah. As women, you know, we put so much time in it and effort. Our children, we're so scared. And that's why I think a divorce coach support is so important, whether it's me or somebody else. It's so important. We need it. And girlfriends are great too, but each divorce is so different. Their emotions and their experiences, life experiences are different. Their partners are different. Yeah. And I remain neutral because I went through that. I had no support. Right. I had to look for support. And when, yeah. so- I didn't share this with my girlfriends. And I think family and girlfriends sometimes are scared to say things to you that you may not like. I, I mean, I had uh, friends that thought we had a perfect marriage that just didn't see it, right? Even if I told them, they didn't believe it. <laughs> so, you know, it's sometimes, and also your friends like, I don't want to get involved. I'm your friend, but I don't want to go there, right? I don't want to give you the wrong advice. advice. So this is why having somebody neutral is good to have. Yeah, we put on a persona, we wear the right clothes, we wear yeah. the right makeup, you know, we we do this dance and yeah. we keep doing it. Right. And and you know, then there's the whole thing of, you know, as a divorcee or divorcer, you know, and how do I go back out into the world? You know, I remember one thing that struck me is I remember looking at somebody that was like twenty seven and think, Oh, he's good looking and I thought, Sarah, you're remembering yourself as a single woman when you're younger. You're not that age anymore. You have to look at people at a different age because we go back into our single mindset. And in your single mindset, you're a lot younger. So, you know, it, there's still a lot of navigation to do once you've gone through the divorce, once you've gone through the separation, but you really have to be willing to do the work on you. And I took time to do courses and, and discovery and what was my redirection. And then, as I said, five and a half years later, my relationship, which then helped me discover more myself. And then I fell into me. 2012, I fell into me and my path and my calling. And that was because the willingness to take the journey. And I can and, so relate to that myself. Yeah, so my yeah. journey started in 2008. In 2009, I started having aha moments. Mm -hmm. And she didn't say anything. And she wanted me to keep going. There's still a lot of healing to do. 
And uh, so going back to that, yes, I could so relate to that. I, you know, I went through that journey of feeling yeah. every emotion yes. that I had suppressed as a child because I didn't know who self was. And once right. you know who self is, it's like, oh, uh, there's, you, you're so capable so much. Like you, you found your purpose of what you do. Through my own healing journey, this was my yes. sole purpose. Yes. Um, and, and we don't realize that we're so busy bending ourselves backwards into a pretzel to please someone because that's what we've been told we need to do. But we're pleasing somebody at the cost of ourselves. And, you know, they maybe fell in love with who you were in your honesty at the beginning. And then somewhere along the line, you lost yourself and just wanted to please everybody and what they wanted. And then you aren't the same person anymore. Family. And we get so involved, again, back yeah. to communication and boundaries, the fear of speaking our truth. He may leave or I don't know how to do this. I've never done this. It wasn't taught to me as a child. We say stuck for those reasons. Right. So yeah. once I start doing the work, they see that and they're able to connect the dots. They did this and then they try to, re sometimes, and that's what I did. I didn't do this. And when I started to communicate differently after what, we got married in 1990 and this was 2010 or 11, it was too late yes. because people are set in their ways. Now right. we're in our forties. So yes. it was hard. So again, going back to both people have to be willing to do the work. And yep. it won't work with the one person. It just no, won't. No. And, 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 then, and you're not responsible for that person. No, you're, you're not. You're only responsible for yourself. And, and it is important that you're happy because you've got to look. Your children are going to repeat what you have done or how you've lived or how you've sacrificed. And they're going to unknowingly, it's that pattern that you've installed in them. And one of the greatest gifts I could do for my children is place value upon myself and step into me because it gave them permission to be themselves and not be beholden to someone else. So, you know, the thing is, be willing to take the journey. Don't force someone to take the journey with you. You're responsible for self. Do it agreeably and amenably. Um, and, you know, if you are in this COVID stage where you don't know, then just say to each other, we've both got to do our individual work. Let's do that. And then let's revisit and see, is there a synergy for us to be together? Or do we just agreeably call it quits and go our separate ways? 100%. So Sarah, on that note, yes, the self-awareness has to be there. So yes. you know, I've been struggling so much with so, and then it wasn't 2000, I was at the end of my rope and I happened to admit, you know, you know, they say the teacher appears and the student's yes. ready. So I yes. guess I was ready in 2008 and this lady appeared and, you know, she said some things to me, do my work and you'll live the life and yeah. your sole purpose, your kids will become like you. And I'm like, it was hard, yeah. but I kept it on and here I am. So I found my sole purpose. And I'm supporting other women that are undecided whether they want to leave or whether they want to stay in the relationship. Yeah. So I support them from both angles. Right. And, and you know, there is I, no one size that fits all. It's what's right for you. And are you willing to step up and participate in your own life, which is important. Now, I know you've got another appointment to go to. So um, how do people get hold of you? Do you have a, you know, a, a 15 minute talk with them to see if there is a synergy beforehand? What's okay. your procedure? So Sarah, what I do, I have a 30 minute complimentary divorce clarity call mm -hmm. and people can reach me at, at my website, divorce to happiness.ca. Okay. And I have a brief questionnaire. It's like three or four questions about your situation. And then I book a call and I get in touch with you and we book a call for 30 minutes and see if we're a good fit to work together. Right. And then take it from there. And of course, okay. and it, you know, it doesn't mean that they have to be divorcing. It just may be crossing their mind as an option and, you know, speak to you beforehand to find out if this That's is right. the path they need to go. And if it is help them navigate through it. And if it isn't, you know, the guidance on, on what they need to do next, but the most point is don't do it alone. I did. And I should have got a great deal more. I should have been in a much better position. Um, but I did it in a way that my heart and soul wanted peace and harmony. And that was what worked for me because at that point I was pretty shattered and I was looking for my harmony again. So, you know, we go with what we can. But knowing somebody is there that's been through it, who understands it, who can navigate you through it, you're not alone. You're given the, the, the tools, the skills and the knowledge to apply to yourself. And you can come out of this without you know, any nastiness and with a cohesiveness, with a different form of relationship with yourself and with your spouse and with your children. 100%. I think in the minute we get that aha moment, something is bothering. Yeah. And I've always been in touch with myself, but you know, like I said, didn't get the help later, but question it. Many times we, yeah. we push it down again. Yes. Why? Don't investigate it, you know, go see somebody and then 
the earlier you catch it, the earlier you can, it's like, you know, having a health issue, the earlier you catch it, the earlier you can deal with it. So same with relationships, anything. And, you know, I always feel the relationships are the core of our existence, yet we do not value them as much as we should. Right. No, relationship with self or anyone else. So divorce to happiness.ca, not .com. Please go back and listen to the show she did with me in the beginning because it was her beginning. Uh, you know, to where she is now, she was, you know, it was 2013. You, you, you know, started your divorce proceedings in 12. And so this was uh, kind of still a new thing for you, but there was a lot that you were going through at that time that would benefit somebody who's in that early stage. So go back and listen to that show too. And divorce to happiness.ca, reach out for that half hour conversation. You may be able to save your marriage or, or, you, or maybe not, but the whole thing is you're not alone and have somebody else's ears reflect back to you, you know, what you can do and don't feel paralyzed about it. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, love. You're not alone, folks. We know that this whole change and transition is catching everybody off guard at the present moment. It's not a time to do a knee-jerk response to anything. It is a time to investigate, to step up in your own life. What can you do? Which way can you go before you make any major decisions? Investigate, explore, self-discovery, and be as awesome as you can be because that's what you really want in any relationship with anyone else. Until next time, bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.